Planning and Community Development Committee. Uh, uh, can I first of all get a motion to uh, approve the minutes of our prior meeting? Uh, Supervisor Bramer, second by Supervisor McGowan. Ed, did you want to start off and kind of kind of net us out quickly here? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Ed. So, good morning, and uh, wanted to uh, run through some of our activities during the uh, month of uh, October. Uh, first, we had a, uh, in, in partnership with uh, all the business review, uh, an investment in the, uh, Thank Glens, you, Falls, the Glens Falls uh, region uh, that was held uh, earlier this uh, month at the uh, Pittsburgh Hotel, about 220 were in a, uh, at attendance on that. And what we're trying to do again with all the business reviews is uh, about 45 to 50 percent of the attendees were from the capital region, uh, meaning uh, Albany, connected Detroit, some were from South, and a couple of folks were from uh, Syracuse and the Rochester area that came in, and we had uh, four uh, speakers, Mark Levac uh, in real estate, Sean Davidson, who is uh, undertaking uh, substantial renovation to the lower part of Sherman Avenue. If you drive through that lower part of Sherman Avenue on the way up to the high school, uh, you will see on both sides of the street there uh, substantial upgrades in the apartment complexes uh, in that particular area. Uh, and, uh, we also had uh, Sonny Bonaccio as well uh, as uh, Peter Hall that were there to uh, speak. Um, also, we had participated uh, at, at SUNY with the Workforce uh, Development of the Canal Corporation was sponsoring just not jobs for the canal, but it was a general uh, activity regarding uh, workforce uh, development. And uh, we had representatives from Irving Tissue uh, in uh, Fort, Edward, Fort Edward as well as other uh, businesses there. And we realized and we recognized that, we, that this is just not a workforce issue in Warren, Washington County. It is an issue that is all through New York State, uh, as well as uh, through the uh, country at this particular time. So really what is tied into these issues is, is really a trio of issues, the workforce issue, but that is just a, a symbol of the issue what is needed to be addressed. Uh, and uh, again, one of the issues is the lack of child care uh, in this area, particularly in the North Country. Um, and uh, SUNY of Adirondack, Dr. Duffy, is leading the charge and is having a, uh, a conference later this uh, month uh, relative to how we can provide uh, further assistance to uh, businesses working with the uh, state and federal government uh, on this uh, activity as well as uh, businesses. Uh, in larger populated uh, areas, uh, you have some uh, foresight by businesses that have right on site at their businesses daycare. Uh, the state of New York several years ago uh, had uh, substantial daycare centers at the Department of Motor Vehicles at the Empire Plaza uh, in other uh, areas. Um, so as an example, uh, the nursing home facility in North Creek has about 120 employees. Um, they have a difficulty on two fronts of keeping their uh, employees. One is the lack of daycare uh, in that area um, and the uh, ownership of the uh, nursing facility there has offered space. Uh, no funds yet or uh, something, but that's, you know, that's kind of uh, something out of the box that they're willing to uh, alter their uh, spacing up there to take a look at how we can do that. Now the cost is how that cost would be operated, uh, whether it's uh, subsidies or whether it's uh, tax credits. Again, tax credits are not helpful to people of a low moderate income because they don't make enough money in order to get tax credit. And obviously with tax credit, you have to have the money and spend the money in order to get tax credits. Uh, so that's the issue. Um, and then the second item. Uh, Wait, and before you move off that, can I ask a question? Ahead, yeah. Thanks. Um, could we offer for someone, i.e. the state, offer tax credits to the nursing home for That's providing the, that, that right, right now it is not um, under the uh, guidance of any tax credits, but that's certainly that some are beginning to look for. Um, and, and most importantly, I think I might have mentioned this before, that uh, in, in Quebec uh, a few years ago, they undertook a effort uh, 
serious effort um, through the uh, Quebec uh, Providence to provide some subsidies to businesses. Um, and as a result, you had uh, approximately 25 to 30 percent women come out of the unemployment uh, non-labor force into the labor force that helped them during their workforce uh, mm -hmm. shortage. So this is something that the uh, state of New York is looking at, uh, Claudia, and I think that's something that we would you know, be supportive of, uh, yeah. something along those lines. And the second wing of that is something that Warren County is looking at, the Warren County Planning uh, Department, uh, is affordable housing uh, in certain areas, again, in the uh, North Country, but even down in the uh, Ridge Falls area, affordable housing uh, is a, uh, another key uh, for uh, employment uh, in our area, um, you've got to be able to have that to attract. So, you know, some of our businesses are looking for people now, so they're talking about, well, people, because of the transportation uh, going north, you're going against all of the traffic, so these people automatically will come up here. Well, again, that delves down to the issue of uh, what the salaries are. And uh, again, that relates to the salaries up in uh, our area, just like our costs tend to be relatively lower than in the capital region. So if you've got individuals that are traveling from Albany up here for a job um, and, and getting less pay than they are getting in the capital region, that makes it very difficult. Now, if they were to look at relocating uh, within this particular area, and there was uh, some semblance of affordable housing, and there was, uh, you know, daycare uh, being offered, then I, I think that that opens the uh, door to uh, assist our employment uh, activities because basically uh, it may not be every day, but uh, just about um, we get calls from different uh, size businesses that are looking for uh, employment for people. Uh, and you drive by and you see signs at uh, stores or even a bank will have a sign or a, a, a local gas station in a rural area has, you know, wanted, you know, you know, stop in for a job. Uh, you know, this is uh, an issue that, um, depending on how the economy runs out in the next couple of years, will continue to be, uh, you know, an, an issue uh, in a particular area. So. I think that Warren County is, is looking to address the big issue of affordable housing, um, which is very positive, and I think they care through Dr. Duffy is a start. Uh, part of that is the uh, opportunity that the state of New York through the Department of Labor uh, is examining uh, this issue on how they can be more uh, helpful as a wing of uh, workforce is, is their issue. Well, that uh, kind of a long uh, answer here, but I, I think that the workforce is just not simply finding jobs. I mean, I uh, talked with uh, Roger Finn, who uh, uh, is part of the marina uh, operations, and again, he's on the telephone telling me that the uh, you know the technicians, not mechanics, but technicians that are on the uh, you know the lakes uh, trying to uh, make the maintenance of, of the boats and so forth, they're aging. Uh, and there is uh, no replacement uh, for these uh, technicians. Uh, he has been working with uh, BOCES to uh, try to open up some classes uh, for that to uh, happen. But again, that's just one little element, but an important element that relates to our economy and relates back to our tourism of having uh, this uh, opportunity to have curriculum uh, available uh, for uh, technicians uh, to work on boats uh, in, in the Lake George and other lakes, you know, in our, uh, you know, in our uh, area as, as well. So um, that's another uh, factor that uh, we, we need to keep track of. And you can go right down the line. Um, over the years, Elizabeth Miller from Miller Mechanical and Doty Machinery in Fort Edward has to go outside the uh, area down in Pennsylvania and so forth in order to get welders. Uh, into uh, our region for uh, jobs. Now, Local 773, the plumbers and steam fitters, um, has a welding program. They actually have uh, uh, 21 booths uh, of uh, welding uh, that uh, is environmental uh, friendly um, and also visual uh, welding as, as well for the startup. So you don't put your, your burns on your hands uh, on the startup.
start out with that. But again, they are attempting uh, through their courses to uh, fill, fill somewhat of a gap. But that's another element and another portion of our workforce in the area. We can sit here all day and go through every sector uh, in our, our region, but we're not alone in this. Uh, we're, we're continuing to uh, collectively uh, work with the city on the Brownfield Opportunity Area uh, that is in phase one or step one and that report has been issued and then we will have the opportunity to join in with uh, Queensbury uh, in their uh, Brownfield Opportunity which is in South Queensbury including Sibagagi to see how we can collaborate and partner uh, in, in that particular uh, in that particular area as uh, well. So those are the buildings are gone on, uh, on South Street. Is the rubble gone yet? The rubble is almost gone. But what they've done is they have uh, two piles. One is for the recycling pile, and uh, whether the other is uh, to uh, go elsewhere. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, we're having some better. Like our battery's going down. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. This was. Oh, now we got this. The techie bailed you out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is good because Sarah is getting a push from Wayne to move my presentation along quicker, so she just went by two slides. No, I went backwards. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. So, the affordable housing that was groundbreaking, that again is 17 units of affordable housing that will be completed uh, and occupied by this uh, next uh, summer of uh, 2020. Is that technically affordable housing? Isn't it workforce housing, which is some different No, it's, a, it's, a, it's affordable housing. There is elements in there of workforce. In our region, the boundaries in income between affordable housing and workforce is very narrow. If you go into the capital district and other areas down into metropolitan New York, there is a variance between a, a considerable gap between what we know as uh, workforce and affordable housing. Okay. In this area, what's happened is under the Tax Act uh, that was passed, um, it included a section that you are allowed to blend, have a blended rate like a mortgage rate. This is blended uh, for the affordable workforce housing. So there is probably, I think, four to six units, uh, Claudia, that has a little bit higher level. The rest of the units are affordable. Mm -hmm. They are able to do that um, and still maintain they got a 9% tax credit uh, for their uh, project, which was the first 9% tax credit in uh, you know, our upstate uh, area. So do you want to hit the next one? Okay. Okay. So um, we just have a uh, outline uh, here in terms of the uh, brain gains uh, in the area, and of course, uh, it's uh, heavily impacted by uh, the southern rim of uh, the capital region, which is in the uh, Albany Schenectady Troy area, with the number of universities and colleges. We have 30-plus uh, colleges and universities uh, located, uh, including the SUNY Adirondack and so forth. SUNY has a campus down in uh, Wilton on Route 9 as uh, well. So that, that just shows our particular uh, area with the educational uh, gains that we've had in our particular uh, area. The key on that, of course, is to have the employment opportunity. Uh, after they graduate, uh, a lot of, particularly uh, RPI, Union College, do remain and undertake their masters, and then they look for employment uh, area. And that is, uh, the solution is coming from supervisor meeting on, on this. Mm -hmm. get some good, uh, yeah. get some good but again, effort. this yeah. is not just a issue for New York State. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's top ten states uh, in the country that have uh, a, a drain of people, and New York State is seven out of ten on that uh, you know, particular uh, list that came out of Forbes magazine uh, last, last year, I believe. 
Um, and so when you go through that, uh, you can see a variety of reasons why these states uh, are, are losing their population. Uh, it, it may range from pure taxes, uh, or it may range from uh, those that decide for uh, various reasons uh, from climate, area, and so forth. Again, yeah. it, from, our, from our study, it, the number one reason is taxation, the number two is cost of living slash taxation, and the number three is weather. And... Uh, you can't do anything about any of those, can you? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we can go to the <laughs> dome, <we can laughs> dome over uh, upstate New York. For and sure. No, I think the weather is so far down the list, it was, it was almost a moot point. But I, if you're saying we can never do anything about taxation, Mr. Uh, Wild, I, I'd like to differ on that. Um, but I would say that uh, the Quinnipiac poll, which was done about six months yeah. ago, stated that 36% of all New York State residents that were surveyed plan on moving out of the state in five years, within five years. Now, that doesn't scare people in this room. I don't know what will. So, but I, I think that you know, Doug, that Warren County can't do this by ourselves. No, no. We can do what we can do. And, uh, and uh, uh, we can covered by the entire state. Yeah, I, I, I think we, we need to focus on what we can do and yeah, what we can right. control it. Uh, and, and that's that, what we're talking about this morning. If you can, you know, delve into these areas that uh, they're not uh, pro high profile, they should be. And that's affordable housing, more affordable housing in our area, daycare for our current people, and also to encourage when people are on the internet looking for places to locate, there's no argument that we have a great quality of, of life in this area. It, um, and I think it's under soul. Yeah. yeah, I think um, it's under soul. And that's part of our but, task uh, force. We uh, need to shore up these other particular uh, areas. The culture that we have in this area, uh, from our arts and the museums, uh, is, is again. So we have all of these pluses. And we have some of these areas that need improvement. And, and those are uh, areas. And just uh, as important as our infrastructure is these other areas of affordable housing and daycare, yet they never get the attention they need. Supervisor McCallan. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> daycare is a uh, is definitely important, but you see them open and close all over. Why? It's, it's due to the regulations, due to so many laws, and, and the lawyers and people are scared to death, you know, uh, of opening a business in the daycare. I just, you know, like I said, I, 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 we need it, but how do we make it so it, it becomes more affordable by the time all the regulations and everything else and all the insurances and everything you have to, and all the security checks, and, you know, people can't afford to send their kids there because they got to make some money. Right, part of part part of it uh, is the uh, re reimbursement rate. Part of it is the uh, slowness in getting the reimbursement from Albany, uh, and that's complicated by the fact that when they were are, are told that the expectation of reimbursement has to be at this level, by the time it gets to Albany and back, it's at that lower level. Um, in uh, the the city of Lawrence Falls Local Development Corporation over the years has loaned money on a short term basis to two or three different uh, daycare centers because of, one, that slowness in the reimbursement and also the gap between uh, what was set out for reimbursement level and what came in at a reimbursement uh, level. And those are things that for the existing, you're absolutely right, uh, my uh, daughter at one point was looking to operate a, a daycare facility with some other people and I went with them and toured with a contractor who was well versed in this area. And the, uh, again, we want our, you want when you drop off your kids to be safe. The rules and regulations uh, that they were imposing in, in terms of the room size and things like this makes it very, very uh, you know, difficult to uh, operate, particularly up here in the uh, North Country. So in the North Country, you're forced to either have the, your grandmother or the aunt take care of the uh, kids part time, or that they are uh, in a uh, number that may exceed the number that is supposed to be in place there. Yeah, one of the most significant components of, uh, of cost as it relates to child care facility is payroll. And the ratios that uh, child care providers uh, have to adhere to 
in the state in the, in the great northeast as opposed to the south for example uh, the uh, I, I think there's a one to six ratio when it comes to you know the definition of infants in the state of New York so it's just it payroll becomes a major component and the rules and regulations vary from geographical parts of uh, of this country so uh, the, the great northeast we are we we just basically have ratios when it comes to payroll as uh, as it relates to the, the care for the caring of children which I which I agree with so it's a matter of safety uh, so Ed, do we, uh, are we moving? We're, we're, we're just about done, uh, Chair. We uh, have done for a number of years in cooperation with the Warren, uh, with the Washington County Local Development Corporation, Deanna Thurway, um, a program that is hosted at SUNY, which is an eight-week course. We have one in the spring. We have one in the fall. Um, and uh, just uh, two weeks ago, Deanna and I went up and, and talked to them. They're nearing the end of their course about uh, 10 to 12 are graduating from that eight, eight week course and a lot of these uh, are um, young adults that are looking to start their own uh, businesses and we're providing them uh, various opportunities of how they can uh, access some capital as long as looking at their own and they went through their business plans uh, very impressive uh, presentations uh, by this and over the years probably we've had 20 plus between Warren and Washington County go through this program successfully and obtain the uh, loan that are still in business. And a lot of these uh, are uh, out of the out of the box type of things. Um, for instance, one is who's looking to have a mobile. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because it, it doesn't want us to repeat there on a business plan. It's a very innovative plan that dealt with outdoor recreation. Let me put it uh, that way. Um, and others were more in the traditional areas, but the entrepreneurship uh, in our area certainly is not lacking uh, among the uh, young. And also uh, the program is open to those that um, are looking to make a uh, midlife change from uh, being an employee to an owner as well. So it's been uh, very helpful and during the course of that overview we have uh, CPAs that come in, we have insurance, we have attorneys that come in, we have uh, also access to the store to the SBA to assist these uh, individuals in the program. So, uh, Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, Supervisor Bram. I have a question. Uh, speaking about um, entrepreneurs, how are we on making progress with broadband? Broadband, uh, In the, the, the technology Florida. is rapidly, broadband, uh, you have to separate the broadband in the Glens Falls, Queensbury area and the rest of the country. In the, in the southern part of our county, uh, people are asking for more width and they're asking for speed, speed, speed. Mm -hmm. In the North Country, many areas are just asking to get some kind of broadband. And, and so there, there are two different uh, uh, you know, approaches uh, going on. Um, so in the North Country, um, again, we're waiting to see there's supposed to be an updated uh, review as to what areas uh, have received uh, their broadband that was announced uh, two years ago uh, by Empire State and the broadband people in other areas that are on sat you know that are on uh, satellite and I, I think a, a good thing effort has been made but there still remains uh, areas uh, that are not uh, fully there we have supervisors here from the North Country that can attest uh, to that fact so uh, I'm waiting to see how long this, this update is going to be. So Kevin can give the first report. Mr. President, you're already. No good faith efforts have made to do anything about property. In 2016, other than have somebody get up. Well, I had a broadband next year, and that's the governor's office has done it every year. The maps don't agree, and we don't even have a cell service. So, you know, want broadband, you don't have cell service, and nothing's been done. And I'm sorry. You know, and you're I'm speaking of Warren, Warrensburg? No, I'm speaking of the North okay. Country. I, I think I would disagree. Slick, which is in St. Lawrence. Well, maybe Slick came down to some of them. Well, I'm just saying that uh, yeah, that's a broad area, statement to say that nothing has been done. I, I think that, uh, I understand that. But a good portion of Warrensburg does have 
internet, correct? No, good membership does. Okay. But the 145,000 homes that Spectrum was supposed to have to take care of, I haven't seen any of them. I don't disagree with the lack of activity. And I just think that state gives a lot of lip service. I wrote the governor a letter, never got a response about it, and laid out the plan for our town. I haven't received any response from the governor. Twice I wrote him letters, but no response. I checked the other day at Intercounty. We asked about cell service. You know, and everybody's frustrated. So I don't know. I don't know if I'd sing that song saying that. I'm not singing that song, but they have. I can tell you that I know in areas. It's not helping in Warren County. Great. Thank you very much. Wayne, are we done yet? Okay. I guess we're down to the last seven minutes. Okay. Wayne, I tried to get it to 10.15. I tried, but the chairman put me off here. There's a number of kind of housekeeping things here in front of the committee today. The one is the Climate Smart Task Force to appoint the, reappoint Chris as the coordinator. We're bringing this forward now because if we wait until January when, you know, it needs to be done, there will be a lapse in membership. So there's a recommendation here. Chris, no changes, right? We have one addition to the task force. The else one to remain on there. And that's Dan Baruch, Director of Planning and Zoning from the Town of Lake George. And then as soon as somebody fills the position of Environmental Analyst or Engineer 1 in DPW, that member would join the task force. So right now there's a vacancy for that position. So I just had no change. So I'd ask the committee's consideration of forwarding that for the organizational meeting. All right. Do we need a resolution to Supervisor Bramer, seconded by Supervisor McGowan? All those in favor? Aye. Resolution number 10. Okay. The next two resolutions go hand in hand. Every year in the budget, the county provides in the 80-29 budget approximately, well, not approximately, they provide $10,000 for efforts that we do locally to supplement grant activity for the First Wilderness Corridor and other activities. To utilize those, we transfer those over to a capital fund. So the next two resolutions move those funds from 80-29 to the transfer account and then from the transfer account into the capital fund that we will use for the next resolution. Great. Approve both. We have a motion on the floor to approve both of them. Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. All those in favor? Aye. The next resolution request for consideration is to amend our contract with Advocate. Their proposal for additional services that kind of take a current project to the next step is identified. I don't know if Sarah's been in charge of that. Do you want to say anything relative to that? So this is just a few additional items, and I apologize. There's just a couple of pages in between here. But one is for the actual installation of the panels in the visitor center. When we did the original proposal, we needed to wait and have whoever we awarded the contract go in and visit the display and kind of figure out the best method for fabricating and installing the panel. So the original contract didn't cover the installation of the panels because they hadn't yet gone in to see the whole display. So that is one portion of this is just to cover the $1,062 of the installation of the panels in the visitor center. And then we also added a couple of small additional items into the contract. The design of the kiosk for Harris Preserve, a design of a kiosk in Pottersville. And then the other thing in here is the production of the posters. So we talked about this at our committee meeting last month about the producing posters that we can sell of the nice artwork that they developed for the visitor center. So there is a, this includes the cost to produce those posters. Great. So we have a motion to 
amend our contract with uh, Advocate. Uh, can we, Supervisor Wild, seconded by Supervisor uh, uh, McGowan. Uh, those in favor, did you want to make a comment, uh, Supervisor Wild? Yes, no, don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Please. Chairman. Sarah, um, it's a thousand dollars or so for installation. Can't we use our facilities team to do this? And this is a specialized installation right. because uh, we were initially thinking that we would be able to um, to uh, just replace the panels. I don't know if you've been in the Lake George Visitor Center, but it is a curved wooden display that was created by Adirondack Phoenix however many years ago, 20 years ago, I guess. Um, and it turns out that it is it was not made to be taken apart. So it would be extraordinarily expensive to take the display apart and put the panels, um, you know, and replace the panels with the existing material. So um, when the, the fabricator visited the site, we decided that the best thing to do was to um, create a vinyl overlay. So essentially they're going to create a vinyl overlay that will go over that phenolic resin panel that's there now. Um, so we're going to do one test panel, just make sure everything works correctly. They assure us that they've installed over the existing material before and that it's, you know, temperature um, resistant and, and all of that. So we're gonna, we'll do a test one, make sure it looks okay, and then assuming it does, we'll install the remainder. But it's a specialized um, installation, so. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Do you, have, do you have another comment? Yeah, are we passing this one that says about um, amending the contract amount to 6340? Yes. And that is all of these things added yeah. up to 6340? Yeah. It looks like it's less Plus than that. The, the install, the 1,600. Oh, okay, all right. That, yeah. that, that's why that's it's handwritten. That's not on here. Okay. Sorry, there's a, uh, gotcha. yeah, there's a, that was the last minute. <laughs> so we have a motion on the floor and a second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Resolution okay. number 20. Okay, um, in order to um, sell these posters, um, there needs to be a mechanism in place and the Warren County Historical so uh, Society has agreed to act as the front agency for sales and processing, so we need a memorandum of agreement with them to uh, undertake that activity. Great, thank you. We have, a, we have a motion to that effect. Supervisor Strau, second by Supervisor Bramer. Any discussion? Supervisor Bramer. Are we paying them to do that? So. We think that it would be fair to give them, so the posters cost about uh, a little over $3 a piece to produce. I'm thinking we can sell them for $10. I think it's fair that we give the Historical Society a dollar or $2 for each sale. We'll still come up with $5. They'll get to keep $2 for each sale. Seven, five. Mm -hmm. Right, so is it $1 or $2? I think two. Two, okay, great. <laughs> Since uh, Dan's sitting right here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an agreement we have here? <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor McGowan. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, where else will we be selling these? So Dan has very graciously offered to sell them out of his office um, in the, um, <coughs> which is across from the, the county clerk's office. And then we have other potential um, options we were thinking we could set up an Etsy shop and sell them through Etsy online, or we could conceivably sell them at the visitor center on Beach Road. We need to do an MOU at a future date with um, the village in order to do that. Um, so we're definitely open to suggestion. We just wanted to get something quickly so that we could, if people were interested in purchasing them for Christmas, um, right. that, that we would be in a position to yeah. be able to do that, and then we can add additional sites down right. the line if we want. To. So when, when do you think they may be available? They should be, um, I mean, assuming this is approved, they said there could be like probably a two-day turnaround to have them produced, and then we'll provide them to them. So maybe by Monday. next Monday? Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. So we have a resolution to uh, set up a memorandum of understanding with the Warren County Historical Society as well as to set up an account to receive funds from the poster sales. Uh, do we have a motion on the floor and a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any census 2020 presentation? Okay. I'm just going to get through this. Um, but we had our, um, <coughs> our first complete count. Uh, census 2020 meeting last 20, month. 20. Um, so just a quick reminder, Census 2020 is 
coming up in April of next year. Um, in New York case, uh, we're set to move two congressional seats. Not great news. Um, we don't want to make that any worse than it already is. So it's important that we get a, a full count. Um, in addition to our representation in the House of Representatives, our funding from the federal government is very much impacted. So in 2015 figures here, um, the census figures were used to allocate about $675 billion in federal funding. New York received $73 billion of that. So if every citizen is worth $3,000 in federal funding, which is the uh, number based on that 2016 funding, if we have even a 1% undercount in our county, 650 people over a decade, we're losing almost $20 million of federal funding. So it's important for many reasons, but in this one in particular, that we make the effort to get a complete count in Warren County. So some of the funding streams that census data is used to determine um, schools, so the National Lunch Program, Title I grants, Special Ed grants, DOT, Highway Planning and Construction money, Federal Transit, Medicaid, Medicare Part B, CHIP, HUD, Head Start, Community Services Block Grant, Home Program, Rural Water, all sorts of stuff, millions and millions and millions of dollars. So we have an undercount, we lose money. Just a reminder, in this census, for the first time ever, um, respondents will have the option to complete the census online. So starting in March, the Census Bureau will send out um, postcards telling householders how they can respond to the census. Uh, and then in May, they'll send in numerators to householders who haven't responded. <coughs> Again, here's just an overview of the timeline. Postcards go out in March. Um, in our area, this conduct update fees in April and May. This is a big thing for our area. This is for people who don't have mail delivery. Somebody from the Census Bureau will actually go out and use the census packet with information at those um, residences. Here's a quick overview of the questions that are on the census. Basically, how many people are living in the house? Um, how is, is it owned or are you renting? How old are you? What's your sex? What's your race? Just the other people living in the house. So it's not very basic. <clears throat> the complete count committee um, was put together. We have a number of uh, a cross section of um, people from education, the religious sector, local nonprofits, um, office of the aging, public health. So our the task of our committee is to focus on historically undercounted populations and try to encourage them to um, increase their awareness of the census and encourage them to respond. Um, our timeline for our committee, uh, we had our first meeting, as I mentioned, a couple weeks ago. We're in the strategic phase right now, so we want to develop strategies for reaching the hard-to-count populations, identify people we can work with, and create some targeted messaging. January through March, we'll try to get people aware of the census. We'd like to encourage other organizations to improve the census on their agendas. Um, and then in April, we want to remind people that they need to complete the census. And then in May and July, we need to focus on um, encouraging uh, community members to um, cooperate with census workers who are out in the uh, neighborhood um, collecting information for those who hadn't responded. So we have a number of challenges in Warren County um, and especially in the North Country area we have the fear and distrust of the government. Um, there's some concerns about the citizenship question not including the citizenship question also kind of backfired in certain areas with supporters of the president. Um, so we need to make sure that we're providing 
uh, an education and assurance to these residents that they need to respond to the census. They're, they're hurting only themselves if they don't. Um, the online component uh, of the census may be overwhelming for our elderly populations, those who don't have internet access. It's not mandatory that the census be answered online, but we need to let people know that they can call in and do it by mail. If they want to do it online, we need to provide assistance for them. Um, the governor, I believe, did just recently set aside some funding for outreach. I don't know what form that will take, but we need to consider whether we want to supply some additional funding here at the county level. We have a high uh, seasonal and rural population. We need to make sure that we um, communicate how these people answer the census. Um, they may not be here on Census Day on April 1st, but if this is their primary residence, if they're living here more than half a year, they need to answer the census as Warren County being their primary residence, and we need to communicate that to them. <coughs> also, as, as mentions every month, we have um, a high employment rate, and the Census Bureau is looking to hire enumerators, so it's, we're going to have a difficult time filling those positions. So if anybody's looking for part-time work, flexible hours, pretty good pay, spread the word. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, the population trends are very important. Uh, I read a statistic, I think, uh, Last week, uh, California has uh, 39 million people and is the fifth largest economy in the world. So, big time numbers. Uh, Supervisor Bramer and then Supervisor Wild. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Sarah, wh where on social media will we be posting this? And also, can you send that out to supervisors in a, like a, you know, something that we can post on our social yeah, media? Yeah, definitely. Pages? I actually I have a few more slides. Uh, I'll okay. try to speed through that. Okay. But, um, so just, uh, this is our, our census response, response rate for 2010, for some reason there's no data for Oregon, um, but... <laughs> 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 we don't exist. I don't know. I guess not. <laughs> <That's the question. laughs> no, what do you got? No, that's in test here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Don't even have a few. I don't like it. So the darker areas are better, the lighter areas are worse. So that just kind of gives everybody a, an idea as to where their town uh, fits. Um, this is the uh, this is how the census is going to be distributed in 2020. So the light blue area will um, receive census information via mail. Um, the yellow area, which is the more remote rural areas, somebody will come and leave the census information at those houses in person. A lot of area. <clears throat> so again, our hard to count population is kind of a combination of people who are hard to find, um, hard to contact, who live in the same community, they live on a road that's difficult to get to, they're moving around a lot. We have some hard to persuade populations, people who are uh, skeptical of the government, <clears throat> and then hard to interview. Um, so they may have lack of internet access, low literacy, language issues, less of a concern in our area, but still somewhat of a concern. Again, um, young children, seasonal, elderly, rural, all of these populations are uh, difficult, um, more difficult to count if you want to be cognizant of reaching out to them. Immigrant communities and communities of color, not a huge component um, in, in Warren County, but definitely growing. Um, you can see here the growth in those populations from 2000 to 2017. Renters are also historically undercounted. These are the areas of the county, Lake George Village, portion of Queensbury, and then Glen Falls that have over 50% renters in the census tract, so we want to make an effort to reach out to those populations as well. <coughs> so here's our next meeting. Um, we have a website, which is Warren County ny.gov forward slash census 2020. So information will be posted on that um, about meetings and then additional links to other information will be posted on the census 2020 website. Um, we will also be setting up social media accounts, but those have not been set up yet and we will let you know as soon as those are up and running. Can we Great. forward Surprise that, wild. that site to Amanda? Were you done with your first question? Do you want to repeat your first question? Well, one of my questions also was, um, 
will our website be updated by then? Our county website, like so people aren't going to go yeah. necessarily to the 2020 census. It just and our homepage is such a like cluster of things. It yeah. really is difficult to know where you're supposed to be going once you land on our homepage. So, so our plan um, is to have a flyer that is included in the January tax bill, mm. and it will have. Uh, the URL that goes not to our Warren County NY.gov, but Warren County NY.gov forward slash census 2020. Okay. That will have all of this information, you know, local information, and also point to specific stuff on, you know, the main census. Site. That's more, And then who will they call? So um, this uh, <coughs> next complete count committee, um, which is Monday, December 9th, in this room at 10 a.m., we are going to be having a representative uh, from the New York Census Office will be speaking at that meeting. Um, there will be information, all of the libraries are going to be serving as uh, health centers, so we're going to have somebody from Southern Adam Project um, Regional Library will be at that meeting as well, uh, and we'll be getting additional information um, which will include on that flyer in the January, that get sent out in the January tax bill, so, uh, and we'll post on our website as well, as far as where people can go to get help. Uh, Supervisor Wild. Messaging. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Briefly, Sarah, I, I trust you guys are going to be creative, uh, but with the opportunity for the county to lose millions of dollars a year in funding, I, I don't want to discourage you from coming back to this committee and asking for some funds to help yeah. increase yeah. our... Uh, reach. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I think Supervisor Garrity's uh, comments relative to broadband are, it's a national problem. Uh, it, 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 there are a couple of bills in Congress uh, trying to address the issue, but uh, as we get more rural, as we get sparsely populated, it's a, it's a national problem. So, yeah. Our rural area is not a significantly low income to uh, be eligible for many of the uh, federal programs, including USDA. Great. Thank you. So far, Sir Brammer, again, Thanks. did you have something? Yeah. yeah, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, just just on a broader scale, we don't have a Warren County social media page, as far as I can tell, at least on Facebook, which I think would be something nice to have. I don't know what committee we're going to talk about it in, but that would be a place that we can start posting all of these things, because a lot of our departments have their own pages, but we need something like Unified. Here's our county page. So that's my little grape. Supervisor Beatty. Yeah, just a couple of general comments. Um, we were talking about how difficult it is to get child care businesses up and running. And the fact that New York State's the highest regulated state in the country, I, I think, doesn't help th that issue. And, you know, just a, a funny comment. Uh, I know the governor likes to say that the weather is the reason why people are moving out. Well, last I knew the weather in Vermont was pretty similar to New York State, and they're increasing. So uh, I think that argument's rather moot point, but uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Wayne. All right. I, I know we're running late. I just want to tag on to something that Ed was talking about before, and that's a housing study. Um, we are still working on the RFP for the housing study, and why it hasn't gone out yet is that we're closely watching Lake Placid. Uh, Camoyne 310 is doing a housing study for them, an analysis of the needs in the different sectors. And we're talking with Rob Camoyne. We want to wait and see where that one shakes out, and maybe they'll, we'll be able to ask better questions in our RFP and also glean information from their uh, report that they're doing up there. So um, it's not been forgotten. It's just you know we're we're looking at getting the best uh, product that we can out of it and. We think looking at what is happening just north of us and um, facing the same situation. They had their public meeting last week. They had 50 to 70 people there. Um, they got a lot of input. And uh, Rob Kamoyan is supposed to have the report out the end of December, early January. So after that, we'd look to, to kind of polish off the RFP that we have been working on and get that out. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate that. Ed. Just a quick, uh, Sarah. You have a, the exact areas in the county, such as in the city, uh, the area of the East End and Ward 4 were underrepresented, underreported in the last census. Do you have that data to give to the respective supervisors? 
as to their town. Yeah, I think that might be helpful yeah. as well to yeah. focus in on those uh, for everybody, but yeah. specifically understand that. So Mayor Diamond is going to have some work to do in the yeah. East End. Well, Horkin wasn't counted. So, yeah. <laughs> so the, there's a census um, website that it's an interactive map. If you go to the warrencountyny.gov forward slash census 2020, there's a link to um, that interactive mapper. It's the response. Um, outreach area mapper that kind of lists all the statistics from the last census, what the, resp the response rates were for each uh, block group. So definitely recommend that you visit um, that website and take a look so you know what areas in this town were undercounted by. Right. Thank you, Sarah. Privilege of the floor. Anyone from the public want to uh, make any uh, Supervisor Diamond? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I came here today to talk about an important issue in the city of Lens Falls, but more so to my community. I want to share with you an opportunity that uh, the local golf corporation, along with my administration many years ago, were working with the golfer who wanted to buy a piece of property and develop uh, some white manufacturing jobs. I'll just fast forward into where we are at this point in time. Miller Mechanical has been based in First Ward. There's also, a, uh, she's expanded her business in Washington County. She's purchased multiple buildings on Park Street, and she's well vested in the She is, uh, she has in the plan to develop a site on Cooper Street, which is zoned for light industrial use. That is, see, and that uh, particular project <clears throat> Let me backtrack. The owners of that particular project um, got a planning board approval, but it's subject to Article 78. The question is whether the zoning use is permissible. But what I'm asking this board here today, because it's been brought up on several occasions and we've talked to them now, reasons why people are moving out of, out of Warren County because of the We have an opportunity. Mrs. Miller spends over $100,000 a year property tax, school, school tax in one day. She has a plan ready to go once she gets site control over that. Right now, the proposed project that's down in front of Albany for funding is just will not pay any property tax, any county tax, any school tax, and they're going to use state monies to build the building, and they're going to use state monies to, to operate the building. That makes absolutely no sense to me. So I'm asking this board today to pass a resolution supporting her, her um, to oppose the Cooper Street project as is based on economic concerns. We all know how important it is to bring new jobs, to bring a greater tax base to Warren County. If you people feel strongly about this, I would ask you to support a resolution that would send it down to uh, Albany, to funding agencies, um, asking, asking this board <coughs> to um, oppose Thank you, Jack. Uh, we have uh, a recommendation relative to uh, uh, a motion. Uh, I, I, uh, I, I think I tend to agree with Jack from the perspective of uh, uh, we, uh, our, our legislature goes ahead and uh, uh, proposes uh, these type of developments, uh, but they, they leave a, they live a city like Glens Falls hanging out there. Uh, basically paying the tab uh, and uh, basically uh, we we pay the tab for nonprofits as it relates to Warren County so uh, um, Supervisor uh, Diamond is asking for uh, a resolution is there anyone that uh, Supervisor Brammer and as the city supervisor on the table at the table I will um, make that motion and my thinking is is with respect to the loss of the tax revenue on that site. I mean, the city is only so big, and it was intended to be an industrial site. The way the current project is going, there won't be any um, tax base for at least the school district. We think there might be some for the city, but in, um, as far as I know, there's none for the county either. So on that basis, I would make the motion that as Supervisor Diamond laid it out. Okay. Is there a second to that uh, to that motion? Supervisor McGowan. 
we have a second. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, the full board is going to have to uh, vote up or no on, on this particular issue, uh, do we want to give the, our full board an opportunity to vote on it? Supervisor Simpson. Um, I'm going to have to vote no just because of uh, the home rule implications. I think this is a Clemson Falls City issue and a planning board. It's, there's an Article 78 and uh, I'm uncomfortable intervening within city councils and the city government okay. on this. Any, any further surprise or while? Wow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused. The, the state would basically say that no sales tax, no property taxes forever? Are for this? It's a non-for-profit. Yeah, it's, it's a non-for-profit. It's a non-for-profit organization. Current. That's current building, about $100. Million. Okay. And they're using state funding to build the buildings, and state funding, they got a commitment up to five years of, of operating costs purely out of the state. No commitment from the uh, project uh, sponsor, the project owner, to invest in any contributions towards sales, or towards school tax, property tax, or other kind of tax. I tend to agree with Supervisor Simpson. I'd like to leave this to the city right now. Supervisor uh, Beatty. Yeah, I uh, I think uh, the mayor has a very valid point, but there is an Article 78 right now on this whole situation. Uh, I'm not sure at this time it's, it's uh, prudent for the committee to support a resolution uh, until the legal uh, process has had a chance to go through its full, full, uh, full process. So I'm, I'm going to probably vote no on this, but I definitely would like to re-address it if, if after the legal process has run its due course. Uh, I'd be very open to that. Um, Supervisor Diamond, did you have? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I heard some of my colleagues up here talking about the Article 78. What is right for Warren County? That's the question. What's right for Warren County's economic development? Bringing new jobs and new tax dollars. It has nothing to do with whether the zoning issue is applicable or not. That's independent. We're here to focus on bringing new jobs, good jobs, and reducing our our tax our tax base uh, that we're charging people. That everybody has come to the conclusion of moving out of state. So here's one way to retain ownership and retain people living in here. We can't ignore this fact. Supervisor McGowan. Oh uh, yes, I, w <coughs> I would uh, just like to uh, state uh, my reason for for seconding this motion. Um, a couple things. I have been following this um, from day one. Um, not that I don't want a nonprofit to go in there, but I also own properties in Glens Falls, and I I do pay the taxes and it hurts and for another nonprofit organization not that I am against this nonprofit organization I would like to see it someplace else where it's not in the city in this industrial zone which could bring it Elizabeth Miller has done wonderful things for Glens Falls and I stand behind her for increasing the tax bases and wanting to bring employment into the city and this is um, really why I'm standing behind the decision um, that has been brought up um, in the motion uh, to second uh, uh, Supervisor Framer's motion, you know, for the city. Because I think it's the best for the city um, at this particular time. Supervisor Wild. Thank you. Um, you know, I'd like to put... Uh, DDC on the spot here for a second because we've had some conversations in the past about how do we bring businesses into the area and that you've talked about um, the shifting in terms of what companies are looking for and they're looking for existing buildings and they're looking for uh, you know access to transportation and the like bringing a nonprofit does create some jobs right so there will be some revenue streams but I'm curious at the current state of the economy, our local economy, uh, what's the projection of being able to bring in some light manufacturer into into our region? We're always looking for that. On the IDA, we're trying to bring other people in all the time. But I think, kind of I think it's a combination of expansion of light industrial manufacturing, uh, like 
as well as uh, the outreach for bringing regular sites. I think as the mayor has brought up, uh, there, the city of Glens Falls is three, three and a half square miles. So there is not a lot of uh, tremendous uh, vacant uh, property remaining in the city of Glens Falls. And obviously with the uh, manufacturing industry, you, you can't go up. You got you got to you got to go out wide. So that is a, a complex issue. I, I think that this issue is uh, a, a complex issue in the sense that when the property initially was for sale, Elizabeth Miller did have an opportunity to acquire the property, uh, and they could not reach an agreement on that uh, piece of uh, property. The city had undertaken, as Jack has referred, uh, to uh, the issue <coughs> that the uh, local development corporation. Uh, undertook a phase one and phase two on a particular piece of property uh, for uh, the Mullen uh, family, um, and it came back uh, relatively uh, clean with the exception of a couple of uh, minor areas uh, of uh, minimal PCBs that were not deemed hazardous. So that opportunity uh, came and uh, went, and then a not-for-profit uh, came in um, and negotiated uh, with the uh, current owners uh, the uh, city nor uh, EDC was involved in the negotiations and was not aware. Um, and I also think at the time there were some discussions with the city that they were looking at that property. Um, and I think that uh, there was an issue as to what exactly that form was going to take in terms of the use of that particular property. Um, currently it's scheduled to have uh, three components. One component uh, for domestic uh, violence one component for affordable housing and another component uh, for those with special needs. Um, and so you have a whole set of litany of issues dealing with that operation of only having perhaps one to two people oversee that facility at night in three separate units. You have the issue that there is uh, a question as to after five years, will there be an operational budget uh, in place and what would happen to that uh, not-for-profit? Uh, hard to forecast, we know with operating budgets could go up, they could go down, and, and they could be reduced. So you put all of those factors uh, together, uh, is that the best and most use of that piece of property? Uh, the answer, uh, in my opinion, is no. Uh, that, that should be industrial. Um, yet, um, there was one opportunity to buy the property, and it went by. It was purchased uh, by this other group. It has gone through uh, the city planning board and city council has approved that. Um, Elizabeth Miller, uh, exercising her right to file an article uh, 78, that is in front of the court determining whether or not they follow the appropriate uh, process uh, or not. And at the same time, Elizabeth just continues to look for property in the city. So it is a dilemma in front of us uh, that we uh, have. Um, and so the other issue is not for profits. That not for profit. Now you say go to another location, goes to Queensbury. Uh, that's going to be off the tax rolls in Queensbury. It really comes down to not for profits uh, have to pay a fair share to be in the community, and that's where the state of New York will say, well, if we do that, that'll be less subsidy that we can get to operate the facility. Um, and again, um, they can come in and basically uh, locate anywhere they would like. Uh, to a great extent. So I, I think that uh, the issue of having the Article 7, certainly uh, the, the support is here. I think that Elizabeth Miller uh, should have that opportunity in the event that the Article 78 comes back uh, against the uh, city of Glens Falls. It's hard to interrupt uh, from putting my legal hat here uh, and say that Elizabeth Miller can take the property back from this not-for-profit. Yet on the other hand, um, it, it is a situation where um, it's critical for Elizabeth Miller to uh, have that, uh, you know, facility. There's not an easy right. re resolution uh, either way, it, it, without amendments. Uh, I, I support the concept of what Mayor Diamond has been um, talking about in terms of all of these issues. Um, and uh, it's difficult. Elizabeth had indicated probably 10 to 15 workers would be across the street. And we talked about, uh, myself and Mayor Diamond at the time, about Elizabeth Miller moving across the street, and that's why we undertook, with the permission of the Bowens, to do that phase one and phase two, 
um, and yet we were not privy, uh, nor should we, uh, to the negotiations that went on. But uh, suddenly, uh, the not-for-profit appeared there to my, you know, to my surprise. Um, so, uh, support in concept. Um, I just don't know how uh, the impact of that resolution would have without the see what the court does. But in concept, I support what Mayor Diamond is seeking for some consideration, and then Matt brings up the issue of local control um, on, on the uh, issue here. So um, it might be that amendment to this would be is to the, to the Albany that uh, if these not-profits are going to be located here, they need to be paying through a pilot agreement negotiated with the city what they need to pay if they're going to locate. That still doesn't get to the issue that uh, Mayor Diamond has raised in terms of that best use of that property is, is industrial light manufacturing, uh, you know, in that uh, uh, area. So, uh, yeah, just as a follow-up, thank you. I, I, I don't want to get into the debate about the value no. of the community of nonprofits no. and oh, you know, no. light manufacturing, no, no. but I also worry about the fact that this resolution might be in effect um, uh, driving what's called a taking. We're taking the owners, we're telling the owners of this property that you can't sell it for a higher value to a nonprofit. And that's kind of, that's almost like a taking in my mind. We're, we're kind of well, the property's already been sold. We can't undo that. It's sold to the yeah. nonprofit yeah. already. Right. Yeah. How long ago was that? Well, that was Supervisor while. Stroud, I'm sorry. Yeah, but but I had, yeah, yeah, had the chance. Uh, yeah. Supervisor Stroud. Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, I agree with you. I, I know where you're coming from. But the time to do this was a year ago when this issue came up. Uh, but right now, it's gone through the board. It, you know, I think both boards, CBA and planning board. Common council, mayor. Um, you need, you know, every, every coin has two sides. The other side doesn't have an opportunity at this meeting to present their case. I, I just don't think it's appropriate at this time and this place, here and now, to approve this uh, resolution as it is. Okay, I, uh, super so low. Thank you, Chair. I just want to take this opportunity since we brought up the issue about high taxes and what's falls. And the implication is that we have a, a weak tax base and we're suffering because of that. But the fact is, that we pay high taxes primarily because we spend a lot of money protecting the quality of the water in the Hudson River for our sewer plant. We spend a lot of money uh, supporting great services to the fire department, our EMTs, and our police departments. If we went to back, if we went to volunteer fire department and EMT, if we went to center, which is impossible, of course, uh, and uh, cut back and just went to the sheriff department. Our taxes would go right down to the floor. We have great level of service in the city, and we're paying for it. I appreciate that great level of service. Uh, but those who say, well, I'm here. I want to the house that never burns, so why do we need a fire department? I'm healthy, why don't we need an EMT? Better. That's why we have high taxes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we have a, a motion, a second. Uh, we uh, Can we please, uh, those in favor of the motion by raising uh, one of your arms, please. Uh, we, uh, okay, those against, will you please raise your hand so that the we can, we can uh, identify that for the public record. Great, thank you guys. Okay, any, any member of the public wish to uh, say anything? That being said, I think, uh, I have one thank you. Thing, please. Go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to recognize the planning um, staff for working on the presentation to the Environmental Concerns Committee for the septic um, discussion that we had at our last committee meeting. It was really useful and great information to have. And I, I look forward to working with them as we go forward, although I will not take up too much of their time, their staff time, to work on the law itself. But I do appreciate the time that they did with it already. Supervisor McGowan, did you have something else? Yeah, the, uh, you know, uh, as to say on that uh, committee and wrap it all up with, uh, we'll just do it with whipped cream, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great.
every time. That's a reference to this. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are we, are, are we done? I think we're well done. Can I get a motion? I support. Go ahead. Did, do, you, do you have something else? Adjourned. Thank you. Supervisor Stroud, second by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? Thank you. Elizabeth was going to come.